having verified the veracity of the video through diplomatic channels, government is gravely concerned with its contents which we consider an unwarranted attack on Zambia's sovereignty. Madam Speaker, the peoples of Zambia and Zimbabwe have always enjoyed warm relations from pre-colonial times such that Zambia provided assistance, including military support, to the Zimbabwean liberation movement and allowed our brothers and sisters in the struggle to operate from Zambia. It is a known fact, Madam Speaker, that Zambia provided a safe haven for those feeling persecuted during that difficult time in our history and that our founding father, Dr. Kenneth Kaunda, played a key role in international diplomacy efforts that led to the eventual independence of Zimbabwe in 1980. On our part as Zambia, therefore, we have never looked back or regretted having played that crucial unifying role. Nothing has changed since then. Madam Speaker, Zambia is a peace-loving nation whose desire is to pursue friendly relations with all nations, including the republics of Zimbabwe, the Russian Federation, and indeed the United States of America, among others. For example, not too long ago in March this year, Zambia was one of the first countries that called upon the United States of America and the European Union to remove sanctions against Zimbabwe when the United States imposed new sanctions. It is against this backdrop that I wish to state in no uncertain terms that this demonstrates our commitment to the pursuit of neighborly and peaceful relations between the two nations. Regrettably, however, regrettably, however, Madam Speaker, the sentiments expressed by His Excellency President Mnangagwa do not appear to accord with the warm relations highlighted above, hence our concern as government and hence our quest to have this matter decisively and conclusively addressed. In short, Madam Speaker, we wish to reiterate that as a sovereign state, we have no interest in moving away from our long-standing warm relations with either Zimbabwe, Russia, or indeed with our Western partners, nor do we have any desire to pitch one against the other. We are alive to the fact that we, as members of a wider global community, and that in both the regional and continental context, there is need to find a lasting solution to the matters in issue through an appropriate mediation process which should result in measurable outcomes. It is in this context that we have sought the regional body's urgent and immediate intervention in relation to the present and any other matters in seeming contention between Zimbabwe and ourselves.